I want to thank you for joining me here today to get into the Word of God together. I love the Word of God. I love the fact that God speaks to us through His living, breathing Word. And my title today is Discern What Is Discernible. What that means is, guys, is not everything is revealed to us by the Lord. There are only certain things that he reveals to us. And we must discern those things that can be discerned. And we must become okay with the fact that there are a lot of things that are going to remain a mystery of God that are going to remain something that he's not going to speak about to us. And sometimes we get frustrated. And even, can I say this word? Sometimes we get jealous because there are things that God might speak to somebody, but he might not speak to somebody else. Okay. And there are times when you might be the person that God speaks to and you can feel really good about that. But then the very next day, God might speak something to somebody else and you might not get an inkling about it whatsoever. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of times our minds will play tricks on us, but I will have, you know, that that is not a sign of spirituality. Uh, it is, it is really up to the Lord when he's going to speak to us and who he's going to reveal something to. It's totally up to him. And a lot of times God does, uh, choose the, the person with the greatest character and, and, and the greatest, uh, you know, track record to speak to. But there are other times when God chooses to speak to a donkey. There's other times that God chooses to speak to somebody uh, whose, whose behavior in the past has possibly literally been criminal, or at least in our minds has been uh, behavior that is uh, less than good. Uh, and, and God can speak to a donkey and God can speak to, to somebody of very high class, or God can speak to somebody of very low uh, position in life. Uh, it is really up to him who he speaks to. So uh, my title today should be something that will help you to discern what is discernible. And if you are interested in business, if you're interested in trading, if you are interested in crypto trading, if you are interested in stock trading, in equities, if you're interested in being a business person or an investor, or if you're interested in furthering your career, which means you are being paid to manage a business, uh, then you're going to be very interested in this message here today because I am going to be talking about how the prophetic ties in with business. Okay. Uh, how the prophetic ties in with crypto trading or equity trading. This is going to be very interesting for you if you are interested in that topic. And the reason why it's important is because it will, number one, it will help you to know when you are in a prophetic moment and when you are not in a prophetic moment. And it will help you to, number one, make more money and it will help you to more importantly, number two, not lose money. Okay. Because there's a saying in the world of investing and you should understand it. Capital preservation is more important than profit. Okay. In other words, not losing money is more important than failing to make money. You don't want to lose your capital. And so we need to, to make sure that we don't spiritualize things that are not spiritual. And we need to make sure that we don't under spiritualize or fail to spiritualize things that are spiritual because God works in many, many different ways. So with that, let's say a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We worship you. We give you this time. I pray that you would bridle my tongue. I pray that I would say only those things that you would have me to say. And Lord, I pray that I would say them in the, even in the way that you want me to say them. We love you. We worship you. We honor your word. And Lord, I pray that your word, and I pray that, that this teaching that you've inspired me to give, I pray that it would help and assist and it would further your kingdom, Lord. And it would, it would help to bring peace into the minds and hearts and situations of your children, of your sheep. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, amen. First, let me start by saying that it is scriptural that God does not always give 
prophecy to everyone all the time. Okay. The apostle Paul gives many, many teachings about this. And he says that prophecy is like looking into a foggy mirror and that we only see in part, we don't see the big picture. Uh, each person that receives a prophetic word is just given a small piece of the puzzle. That's what the Bible says. But even in old Testament times, guys, where prophecy worked a little differently than it does now, even, uh, for instance, instance, uh, with the prophet Elisha, there were times that God did not reveal things to him. One of those places is in second Kings chapter four, verse 27, where we see that he says, the Lord has not told me what it is. The Shunammite woman had been given a child, but then the child died and she was distressed and she went to go see the prophet and she was so distressed and she was grabbing onto his legs, but the Lord did not show him that the boy had died. And he flat out said with no embarrassment, you know what? This is something the Lord hasn't shown me. Uh, there are things that the Lord does not show me. Yes. He was the greatest prophet alive on the earth at that time. But even him, the greatest prophet alive at that time, he was not shown everything by the Lord. What was he shown? Only the things that God wanted to show him. All right. Everything else, God did not show him. And if God was showing everybody everything all the time, you'd be so confused. You'd be so overloaded. All right. That's not even possible that God would be showing you everything in the whole world all at one time. And so the uh, Elisha is an example to us that God does not show everything to everyone. And he chooses when to reveal himself prophetically. And he chooses when not to. Uh, uh, another time, uh, again, with Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15, he was being asked by a group of kings to prophesy. And he didn't like one of the kings that was there. And so he had an attitude problem. And so that attitude problem got in the way of him prophesying. And so he says in, in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15, bring me a harpist. Bring me someone to help me to worship first so that I will be able to worship so that I will be able to bring, if God shows me, a prophetic word about your situation. And so there are times when we would be able to receive a prophetic word, but our spirit is not right. And our own spirit is hindering us from receiving a prophetic word. And there are things you can do. For instance, what Elisha did, we can worship the Lord. All right. And we can come back into alignment with his will and his ways, come in back into alignment with his Holy Spirit. And then then and only then will we be able to accurately prophesy. What are we talking about here? We're talking about discerning what is discernible. Now, there are things that Elisha could discern. There are things that Elisha could not discern. What was important that he be realistic about the fact that sometimes God shows him some things and sometimes God does not show him some things. Now, uh, of, of, a couple of weeks ago, I preached a sermon. This was on February 17, 2024, just a couple weeks ago. I preached a sermon entitled, Let's Be Real About Prophecy. And I received a lot of really positive uh, feedback on that sermon, but I also received some hate. Okay. I received some shade. Uh, there were some people that were not happy about that sermon at all, uh, who will probably not watch this one because they'll probably never watch me ever again. Because as it turns out, I showed you through scripture that prophecy does not always work the way that you wish it worked. All right. And there's a lot of people that are in la la land or gaga land or whatever you want to call it. A lot of people are in denial about how prophecy works. And one of the things that I mentioned is that God does not intervene prophetically as often as he's, he allows things to just go their own course. Okay. Uh, when God gives a prophetic word, when God brings a miracle into your life, he's bringing an intervention that changes natural circumstances. And it's not really that common. 
Okay. It doesn't happen all the time. If you were living in a miraculous life with a lot of supernatural things going on, I would venture to say that you're, you're getting a miracle 1% of the time or 2% of the time, maybe 5% of the time. Okay. Most of the time your life is normal. Most of the time your life is on what we would call an autopilot and you must become good at discerning when God is going to do soup, something supernatural and when God is going to not do something supernatural and you must become comfortable with both. Okay. That's the only way you're going to go through this life with the peace of God that surpasses all understanding because you're going to pray. And then God is either going to lead you in wisdom by his word to make decisions for yourself according to his natural order of things, or every now and then God is going to give you a word. God is going to bring you a miracle. Uh, God is going to do something supernatural. And either one of those things are okay. The peace of God is with us no matter whether we receive something supernatural or not. Now, one of those examples is prophecies about marriage. Guys, I want to talk about this before I get into finances because I'm not, what I'm talking about just not, does not just apply to finances, although that will be my main point here today. Guys, uh, I came up in an era and this is uh, the 1980s and the 1990s where there was really an abundance of prophecies about who you're supposed to marry. I mean, it was to the point that people wouldn't get married unless they got a prophecy about it. And this is not really happening that much anymore in most circles. And the reason why is because a lot of people got disappointed. A lot of people got burned and a lot of people ended up marrying somebody that even though it was prophesied, the marriage didn't last. Okay. And so people became disgruntled. People became disillusioned and uh, the, the prophetic community became a lot more careful about this, which I believe the prophetic community should have always been very careful about this. But I want you to track with me here just for a moment. Okay. Cause I know a lot of people, uh, who prophetically got married who are no longer married. Okay. They are divorced and Either it was a wrong prophecy, okay, we could call it a false prophecy or a mistaken prophecy, either that or it was correct, but it takes more than just a prophecy for a marriage to last, all right? And I make room for both situations, all right? Uh, <laughs> track with me here. If it had been prophesied that you are supposed to marry this person, all right? Let me explain that immediately puts an X on your marriage, which is a target from the enemy that he now wants to break up your marriage. All right. From the moment that a prophecy is released, oh, that you're supposed to marry this guy and he's supposed to marry this woman. From that moment, that marriage becomes an even greater target than a regular marriage where people just, you know, mad and fell in love and they made the, the quality decision to get married, but they didn't spiritualize it. Nobody was prophesying over them. Let me just tell you, there is a bigger target on the back of someone who married somebody else where it has been prophesied that they are supposed to get married. Let me tell you what, guys, guys, marriage, even when God uh, made it clear prophetically, marriage is something that must be worked on. Okay. There's no such thing as a perfect marriage. All marriages need to be perfect did continuously and they'll never be perfect. Okay. Even if they were prophesied. And so I want you to understand. All right. Most of the time, God is not going to tell you who to marry. Uh, you know, a lot of people are looking for God's best. Well, can I just tell you that for you, there's probably 200,000 God's bests. All right. And it's up to you to find one of them and to marry the one that makes the most sense 
if you feel like it's God's will for your life that you be married and if you choose to be married, okay? <laughs> right? Uh, it's a choice. It is a selection. Uh, you know, this whole idea of one and only uh, is very, very, very rare. And even when God sends a prophet to prophesy on who you're supposed to marry, that doesn't mean that that person is the only one that you possibly could have married. There were other choices. Choices. Can I get a witness on that? And so if it was prophesied that you're supposed to be married to the spouse that's sitting beside you right now, praise God for that. But understand that you are a target of spiritual warfare because the enemy would love to break up your marriage and your marriage can break up if you move into decisions and behaviors that are not going to benefit your marriage in the long run. Are you with me on that? All right. Now, in the Let's Be Real About Prophecy, I talked about the fact that God very rarely gives somebody a stock tip. God very rarely gives somebody a stock pick. Uh, as a matter of fact, in, in my life, um, I don't know how many stock trades that I've done. Um, it's probably 20,000 or 30,000 stock trades that I've done in my life. And in about 70% of the time, I've made money. And about 30% of the time, I have not made money. It is something that is very much a process of elimination. You win some and you lose some, but you make money when you win more than what you lose. Right? And that's the way most things are in life. And so I said, it is very rare that God helps someone on a consistent basis to make money in investments. Now, it does happen. Okay, let me give you an example. I have a friend who is quite prophetic. And one day he was praying and the Lord showed him the face of, of one of, of the congregation members that he works with. Uh, he wasn't the pastor, but he was connected with that church. And, and the Lord showed him that that guy was supposed to buy a building. And so he contacted the pastor and he said, pastor, the Lord told me to tell your church member uh, that, that that guy's supposed to buy a, a building. And the, the pastor said, okay, I give you my permission. Go ahead and contact him. And so he contacted this church member and he said, you've been looking at buying a building. You've been wondering if it's the right thing to do. Um, and God says, go ahead and buy it. And so the guy bought a building for about 3 million US dollars. And this, by the way, is like 25 years ago. $3 million was a lot more money than it is now. Okay. So the guy bought the building and it was not even two years later that the guy was just minding his own business, the prophet. And he was, he was praying and, and uh, he was finished praying. And the Lord spoke to him about the same guy. And he said, sell the building now. And he's like, oh, okay. So he contacted the pastor again. He said, pastor, the, the Lord just talked to, to me about the same guy. And he says, sell the building now. And the pastor says, go ahead and call him and tell him. And the guy says, God just prompted me. I'm pretty sure it's the Lord. And he said, go ahead and sell the building. And the guy said, are you sure? Because values are going up. I mean, the, the, the building is worth probably $7 million now, but it looks like it's going to go to 10. It looks like it's going to go to 15. It looks like it's going to 20, going to go to 20. And the prophet said, listen, it's your choice. It's your choice. But my advice is to follow the prompting of the Lord. And I believe that I heard the Lord say, sell the building now. And so the guy sold the building for almost $7 million. Okay. So in less than two years, he turned $3 million into almost $7 million. Okay. That was a fantastic prophetic investment. All right. Really fantastic. I mean, wouldn't you like that to happen? I mean, number one, wouldn't you like to have the $3 million to begin with so that you could buy a building that would become worth $7 million? Wow. Okay. That's that guy's lot in life. Okay. Uh, sometimes we get jealous of those types of situations, but, but he sold it thinking I'm selling early. This thing's going to go to 20, but you know, it wasn't even a year later that that building collapsed in value. The building didn't collapse. Okay. But the building collapsed in value and the, and the, the people who bought it for 7 million, they ended up going bankrupt because the building became worth less than a million dollars. Something happened structurally. Something happened with the economy 
economy. Something happened with that part of town that they were in, uh, and it ended up being a big loss. Thank God for the prophetic word that helped this guy to, to make money, but also helped him to not lose money. Okay. Isn't that amazing? And by the way, they did build a church building. All right. From that money. Okay. So God used that money in an amazing way. Now here's the thing. Some of you are wanting to contact me privately to ask me the name of this prophet. I know it. I know that some of you are wanting to to direct message me right now to ask me the name of this prophet. Can I just tell you, I'm not giving you his name. I'm not telling you what country he's in. I'm not telling you what nationality he's in, but I will tell you this. He's not Filipino and he's not in the Philippines and he's not American and he's not in America. Okay. This is somebody from a different country. Okay. But I'm not going to tell you where because so many of you, or at least some of you would try to contact this guy. Give me a word. Give me a word. Give me a word. Can I just tell you that prophet? He's my friend. He has never before ever had a word like that for anybody. And he never has ever since. This is the only time it's ever happened for him. And this guy has given hundreds of thousands of prophetic words. All right. But this has only happened in his life once. All right. So he wouldn't even want me to give you his name. All right. And more importantly, I don't believe the Holy Spirit wants me to give you his name. Because if God has a prophetic word like that for you, God will get it to you. You don't need to go looking for prophetic words like that. As, and as a matter of fact, you should not be looking for prophetic words like that. Okay. And so that's how things work, guys. God can, but he very rarely does. God can bless us with inside information that is legal. All right. About business and about transactions. Now, here's the thing. I talked about this very clearly in this message. Let's be real about prophecy. But then on February 19, I delivered that message on February 17. But then on February 19, I had a dream about a stock ticker. And I will give this to you just so that you can research and check on what I'm saying. Okay. And in the dream, I saw the stock ticker W O R X. That's a really weird way of saying works. Okay. And I, in my dream, I had bought this stock and I had sold the stock and someone came up to me in the dream, uh, wearing a suit, looked like a very, you know, good business person shook my hand and said, congratulations on your trade. Now in the dream, the guy in the suit was not Jesus. It was not God. It was not the Holy Spirit. It was just a guy in the suit. But I knew that it was real. I knew that I had been given a dream from heaven about this stock. I just knew it. And when I woke up, I immediately went to my computer downstairs and I looked up this stock symbol works. And it was a company that I had never heard of. I had never looked at ever before. And when I looked at the company, it was a company that I would never buy their stock. Never, not in a million years. There's just so many things wrong with this stock. It's just not the kind of investment that I would ever do. And I said, Lord, is this really you? Are you sure? Should I buy this stock? And I went upstairs and after my wife had woken up, I told her about it. And she said, you should buy a lot of those. You should buy a lot. Uh, and, and, and I said, why are you sensing that it's from the Lord? She said, I really believe that it is. And that is not what I was expecting to hear from her. I was expecting to hear from her. Are you sure? Are you sure that that's really from the Lord? Uh, you know, that's what I was expecting to hear because if she doesn't sense that it's from the Lord, she's going to have doubt in her voice and she's not going to shoot me down, but she's going to say, well, hon, I hope that it's really the Lord and you really need to be careful with this. You really need to be careful. But that's not what she said. She said, how many shares are you going to buy? And I told her, well, you know, I might buy this many shares. She said, I think you should buy more. She was encouraging me to buy more. And so I went downstairs and I bought uh, this stock. 
W-O-R-X. But I did it the way that I normally buy stocks, okay? And guys, I, I do invest in stocks and I invest in crypto, okay? Uh, more stock than crypto. And there's a reason for that. Uh, stock is much more profitable for me than crypto is, but sometimes I will trade crypto. The big reason on that, guys, is crypto has very high fees. Uh, and so you have to be more successful in your trade with crypto than you have to be in stock. If, if, if I can make half a percent you know, on, on a stock, I've made money. But if I make half a percent on crypto, I've lost money because the transaction fees are so high for cryptocurrency. So, so I have to look for bigger moves in order to make money on crypto. Okay. That's just a, a side note. Uh, but I went downstairs and I bought stock W O R X and, and I, I was really asking Lord, how much should I buy? But he, the Lord wasn't telling me that. All right. All that he did was he sent me that dream. He didn't tell me how many shares to buy. And I was struggling with my faith. I was struggling with doubt. I had the faith of a mustard seed, but not a very big mustard seed. I wasn't sure because I didn't like what I was seeing about this company. But I went ahead and bought. But I usually have between eight and 12 positions at a time. Okay. Uh, I never go all in on one stock. Now, as it turns out, I should have gone all in on this stock, okay? But my faith was not at that level. And so the amount that I have in all of my other transactions, I did that same amount in WORX, okay? Uh, that way my risk is distributed among about a dozen stocks, okay? Uh, and so if, 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 if I have one that goes up, uh, big, it brings all of them up a little bit. All right. But if I have one that goes down really big, all of them might get taken down a little bit, but it'll only take me a few hours to recover. Are, are you with me? Okay. You, you have to not put all of your eggs in one basket. You have to spread your risk. But when you do that, you're also spreading your reward. And so I bought the same amount that I had in all of my other stocks. And, and, um, you know, uh, immediately, uh, the stock did nothing <laughs> All right, for days. It did nothing. And then it went down a little bit and then it went up a little bit and then it went down a little bit and then it went up a little bit and it became what we would call dead money. In other words, it was money tied up in a stock that wasn't doing anything. Uh, and, and I even considered selling it thinking, you know, I must've been wrong. You know, this was my own imagination. This wasn't really from the Lord. And I discussed it with my wife a couple of more times. And she's like, she was actually, she actually said one more time, I really think you should buy more shares. <laughs> All right. Uh, God's going to do something. And so I kept it and I kind of forgot about it. <clears throat> and then, uh, Ami and I were at lunch it was actually March 6. Uh, we were at lunch and all of a sudden my phone alerted me on the stock works. All right. And that stock skyrocketed in one day to where it gained 52%. And I felt in my spirit sell. All right. And so I sold. As a matter of fact, I had already had it set on an automatic trigger computer generated to sell. And so I ended up making on that stock more than 50%. All right. More than 50%. What, what does that mean? Uh, what that means is if, and I'm not telling you the amount. Okay. But if I'd had a hundred thousand pesos in that stock, I would have ended up with 152,000. Okay. That's how good of a trade it was. Okay. If I'd had a million, it would have been 1.5 million. Are you with me? Okay. Uh, it wasn't okay. <laughs> all right. But, but, but it was a good trade. All right. Now here's the thing. I was ecstatic about it for a few minutes because I said, Lord, it was you. It was really you. You spoke to me. You gave me a, a prophetic investment tip. Wow. And then I started kicking myself saying, why didn't I buy more? Why didn't I really have the faith to buy more? Why didn't I listen to my wife who said to buy more? Cause evidently her faith was bigger than mine, even though I'm the one that got the vision. 
All right. And, you know, it was very helpful. All right. But because it's just one of a dozen positions, I really only made a few percent. Uh, okay. Are, are, are you with me? <laughs> All right. I only made a few percent, but on that trade, it was spectacular. It was spectacular. Isn't that amazing? And so even though I had just said, God rarely does these things, I experienced another time because God has done it before just a very few times. I experienced where God showed me, Hey buddy, Hey buddy, I can do this anytime I want. Anytime that I want, I can help someone through prophecy to prosper. But most of the time I don't. Most of the time I don't. You guys all know the parable of the talents. The, the master went away and he, he entrusted one servant with five and another one with two and another one with one. And, and he went away and, and when he came back, he rewarded them for being good investors. All right. For making good decisions. The guy with five doubled it. The guy with two doubled it. But the guy with one, he said, you're evil. Why did you bury? Why did you bury this investment in the ground? I expect you. I expect you to be profitable. I expect you to be effective. I expect you to grow the resources and the talents and the skills that I have given you. God expects us to perform, all right? God expects us to make money. God expects us to do well in the marketplace. And if you're not called to be in the marketplace, if you're called to raise some kids, God expects you to do a good job raising your kids. Even if you're doing both, you're in the marketplace and you're raising kids. Are, are you with me? Can I get a good witness on that? And God, it, it's not in the Bible that God gave the, the, the servant with five talents any advice. It's not in the Bible. There, we don't see that the Holy Spirit came to him and gave him advice on, on what to invest in. All that we see is that he went and he took those resources and I'm sure he prayed every day, but he just made good decisions. And that is what God expects us to do. God expects us to improve ourselves. God expects us to choose industries that are profitable and lucrative. God expects us to be involved in business decisions that are careful and, and that make sense. And he expects us to make money even if there's no prophecy involved. He expects it, all right? But he can, he can prophetically change the outcome. Now on March 7, just a couple days ago, uh, I was in the middle of a trade and this one was a crypto trade. And uh, I, I was going down in the trade. And as a matter of fact, I was already down uh, more than a hundred dollars. Okay. At this time, I will tell you the amount I, I was down a uh, hundred dollars. And, and I was thinking to myself, wow, this is really moving in the wrong direction. <laughs> uh, should I just get out and cut my loss, take my loss and wait to, to do another trade to make it back? You know, uh, and, 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 uh, I was looking at the screen and all of a sudden I felt the presence of God um, in my body. Okay. And this is something that, that happens whether I'm going to be hearing from God or not, but, but I can tell when I'm in a divine moment because the presence of God can be felt in my body. And I was looking at the screen while sensing the presence of the Lord on me. And it's the weirdest thing. It was like, I was seeing with my eyes open but I was also having a vision or a dream at the same time. And I saw on my computer screen that, that the lines on the graph turned into looking like a dolphin or the front half of a dolphin. And I saw that the dolphin was doing a deep dive, but that the dolphin was going to come up and jump. and jump twice. It was very specific, but it wasn't a dream. It was a vision. 
and it was happening while I was looking at the screen and the screen wasn't really doing it. It was my mind doing it while I was looking at the screen as if the screen was doing it. And I really felt like what the Lord was saying is don't sell. It's, it's like the dolphin diving right before doing a big jump. And I just kept watching and, and, and I said, okay, Lord, I'm not going to sell. I place this in your hands. I believe that this is another prophetic moment. And within the next half hour, that thing jumped. I mean, it curved and it jumped. And I not only got that hundred dollars back, but I made more than that. All right. Uh, I, it was a good trade. It was a good trade. And so the Lord helped me not only to make money, but the Lord helped me to not lose money on that trade. Are you guys seeing what I'm talking about? And so since I've preached that sermon, let's be real about prophecy, where I said, God rarely speaks to us about business. Okay. God rarely speaks to us about stocks or crypto. Since then, God has brought two prophetic cases into my life uh, where he has helped me prophetically to make money. Now, how many trades have I done since uh, I preached that sermon on February 17th? More than a hundred. All right. How many has God spoken to me about? Two. All right. That's, that's 2%. Okay. Less than 2%. It is not normal that the Lord speaks to you about those things. But when he does, we embrace it. When he does, we have faith. What have I learned from this? I've learned that the next time the Lord sends me a dream about a stock, all right, I'm going to listen and I'm not going to, I'm not going to fail to listen to my wife. All right. Because uh, the next time that happens, I'm going to have the faith of a bigger mustard seed. Will it happen again? Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. I'm still going to be a faithful steward. Can I get a good amen on that? God is in control. His favor is there. He leads us and he guides us. And sometimes, just sometimes, he brings a supernatural word into our lives. But don't waste your life waiting for a word. All right. Don't waste your life waiting for a word. Wait on the Lord. He will renew your strength. He will give you wisdom. Amen. And every now and then he'll help you to make money. Every now and then he'll keep you from losing money. Every now and then he'll, he'll set you up in a, in a correct relationship. He might give you a hint on that every now and then he might prophesy through you or over you about other decisions and choices that you need to make in life. But that's not how you lead your life. That's not how you live your life. Don't be paralyzed when there is no prophetic word. Continue to move forward in faith, making decisions based on the word of God, based on the wisdom that God gives you. And be open to the prophetic. But don't be discouraged. Don't be disgruntled. Don't be disappointed when you're not receiving prophetic guidance. You know, guys, I was going to go further. There's another scripture that I wanted to go into, but I'm going to wait for next week on that. I think I've delivered enough for now, and I don't want to go longer than this. I pray that this is helpful for you. Let me pray over you. Jesus, you are the spirit of prophecy. That's what the word of God says. And I thank you that you do help us with prophetic encouragement, with prophetic words. And I thank you that you can lead us very specifically, even in finances, even in business, even in career, even with with crypto, even with stocks, even with business decisions and properties and, and things like that. I thank you that you can. You can help someone to know what property to buy and what property to sell. And even when they've done the wrong one, you can help them to recover. 
Lord, I thank you for that. But Lord, I also thank you that your guidance, your leading is always here. Your favor, your wisdom, your encouragement is always here for us to go through life making good decisions, making good choices. But Lord, as I shared here today, 70% of my decisions end up being winners. 30% end up not being winners, Lord. I pray over every person that they would understand that in this life, nobody's going to have a perfect decision-making track record. But Lord, through it all, you bring us into favor. Through it all, Lord, you bring us into success. Help us to understand how your kingdom really works. And Lord, guard our hearts, guard our minds from disappointment and help us to discern, Lord, when we are in those prophetic moments. Help us to discern even just as importantly when we are not in a prophetic moment. Lord, I pray that that when we are needing to make a good choice and and that, that when we are hoping for prophecy to come when it's not going to come, Lord, I pray that we would recognize that and that we would not try to force you to speak to us because we cannot force you to speak to us. Help us to embrace, help us to discern when it is not a discernible moment. I pray over your people that they would have the discernment to know when you are not speaking just as much as they would have the discernment to know when you are speaking, Lord. I pray this. I pray this over every single one in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, I bless everyone with health. I bless everyone with prosperity. I pray that they would prosper and be in good health even as their souls prosper. I pray, Father, for your favor and your blessings to overtake every single one and that they would serve you, and that they would be generous to your church, and to your kingdom, and to your people, Lord. I pray that they would walk in integrity and character, and that, Lord, they would make good choices with, with, with the seed that they need to sow for that, sow, for that seed to become plants, and to become fruitful in their lives. I strike down every evil spirit right now. I strike down every delusion spirit right now. I strike down every curse right now. I speak healing into minds and souls and spirits and bodies and relationships in Jesus mighty name. I pray for a hedge of protection for the presence of God, for the power of the Holy Spirit to surround and to undergird every single one in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. I love you so much. I pray that my testimony from this last couple of weeks has been helpful to you. And I pray that you will apply it in the right way. Okay, in the right way. And I pray that that you will have the faith of a mustard seed to move when God says to move, but to also make decisions with, with godly wisdom, but human decisions with godly wisdom every hour, every moment, every day of your life, all for his glory. God bless you. Bye.